Hello everyone and welcome to an introduction to Allods Online. Um, this is part four. Now I know I said before that we were going to move on and talk about skills and things, but actually a little change in plans. Uh, I realized after I finished off the last video, I haven't really shown much in the way of combat in this game yet, and that's kind of a big deal. So, <clears throat> now we've got our friendly little Gibbernin character here, and... Um, we'll do a little bit of combat with them, but uh, since they're a really low level, we're not going to be able to see much of the full combat capability. So um, I thought what I'd do is drag in some of my other characters as well and show you what the combat's like, not only at low levels, but also some of the higher stuff too. Anyways, so... Um, now this is what they would call a tab targeting style combat system and um, this area is really really easy so I can uh, get right into it here <laughs> it's not very hard for me to bring down these guys they're they're pretty easy for me so oh, he knocked me back um, there is positioning and things like that that you do need to be mindful of when you're playing. Uh, for example, if I want to shoot this guy, I have to be facing him. Unless I'm using lightning because my character automatically turns around. Uh, you cannot see where boss attacks are going to hit, as with some other games I've seen recently. However, uh, there is a definite specific region, so they are dodgeable to an extent. Um, now let's see here. Now again, I don't have a whole lot of skills with this guy, so I'm not going to be able to really do a whole lot more than hit him with lightning and then send my pet into attack for right now. But I can use this great hunt skill, which increases their attack power, and then send him in. Oops, that'd be lightning. And we'll have him go again. And while he's fighting that, I can actually attack something else entirely. One of the pros of being this class. Later on in the game, enemies are tough enough that the Warden really needs to focus on one at a time. But early on, it's quite easy to take on a couple of them at once. My pet will automatically come to my aid if I get attacked as well. Um, I can show you that if I come over here and fight something that's aggressive. Just running long and frying things as I go. You'll also notice that my pet's energy bar is going down as I'm telling it to do stuff. Normal attacks don't deplete this, but for example, if I click on this guy and tell my pet to go attack him, that takes five pet energy up, so pretty simple. If I tell my pet to go out and rest, then uh, he will do just that and start building that back up. We All right, he's back up to full again, so let's have him go out there. Now this Corsair is coming after me. Notice I haven't even attacked this Corsair yet, the one behind me here. But my pet will run over and defend me. Oops, that be my map key. I play this using a program pad, so it's some of the buttons are a little close together. But hey, monster! Oh, he's got to hit me. There, he's hit me. My pet gets ticked off. Starts beating the crap out of him. And since I haven't done any damage, he pretty much immediately takes the aggro. Woot. All right, that about wraps up what you're going to see at this stage of the game. You really only have two or three attacks. 
Um, you will get a couple more as you level up in this area, but we're still in kind of the tutorial area. So let's try out one of the other classes and see what we can do with them instead. All right, now here we are with a high-level warrior tank build. Um, this is max level. She's level 55. This is my main character, actually. And um, again, there's a lot of different ways that you can build up your character, especially as a warrior. You can go DPS or tanking or kind of somewhere in between, but I went full tank for mine. And as a full tank, really my best abilities are going to be displayed in a party situation but uh, some of the stuff that you get that's different with the tank is or sorry not the tank but the warrior specifically is you'll see up here in the upper left hand side I've got th three bars that are my well they're like health bars basically um, there is your health bar then you have your energy bar or if you're a, a caster type that'd be your uh, mana bar and then warriors get this extra one up here that's absorb. That is a special damage cushion, if you will. And I don't actually take any bars or any health points off from my health bar until this absorb bar is completely depleted. So once this is down, I start losing health. Um, the downside to this is that it cannot be restored inside of combat. So once I'm out of combat, it refills back up to this point pretty quickly. Now that says it's at 35%. That's actually the highest it'll get. Um, there is no 100%. So 35% is the highest. And the amount that you get is based off of your hit points. So you'll notice I've got... Uh, a little over 1.2 million hit points and my absorb bar is 35% of my HP. Anyways, you'll also notice down here at the bottom I've got a lot more combat abilities than the other guy, uh, Gibbernin. If we look at the talents and the talent tree, my ruby grids, got a lot more stuff filled out here. So, let's just break into it. Now I have chosen, uh, not sword, but spear and shield as my weapons of choice. Warriors get a big variety of options for their um, weaponry. You can do two-handed weapons, you can do paired weapons, you can do yeah, most any of the single-handed weapons, be it clubs or maces or spears or swords. Not daggers, though. Um, another thing with the warriors, I've got a combat advantage bar down here, and I need to build this up using some of my attacks. And doing that will allow me to use some of my bigger strikes here. So let me pull a couple of these guys. <coughs> so I'm up to 65. I can use Shield Slam for one example. I've also got Whirlwind and a Range Attack. Whirlwind is best if I can pull a few guys with it. There we go, I got a few of them on me, and I've got it charged up now because I've been doing basic attacks. There's my whirlwind. I can move around while I'm doing this and all that. You'll see these guys are not particular. No, I can't gather any more loot. They're not doing a whole lot of damage to me. In fact, they're not doing any damage to me because they can't take my bar down. Oh, whoop, 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 whoop. Let's not do that. Nope, not really interested in any of that. I have an auto loot collector. Um, but don't really want to use them. Wow, I definitely am out of space here. Let's just... Yeah. 
These are all junk items. Okay. And now my loot collector can go and do her thing. Some of the other fun stuff that I get, though, um, at least with my build-up, I've got Crushing Blow. Lots of fun to use. It does huge amounts of damage and knocks guys into the air, which is effectively stunning them. Uh, and there's other stuff I can do too, but I don't want to go too long and, and stick around too much with specific abilities because there's really a lot, and depending on how you've built your character, it's going to be all different. So this is the way that I've built up this character, and I might even do some changing of it in the future here. I've got a lot of things that pull enemies off of others. I've got a lot of things that increase my energy or my threat. Um, so, you know, stuff that you kind of need as a tank to keep all the guys focused on you. But that is what I do there. I've got a few different mounts too. Woohoo. Um, anyway, so that is just a real quick look at the warrior, and specifically warrior tank. Um, and let's try taking a peek at another different class. Alright, here we are now with a scout. Um, this is a ranged build that I've been using um, on a, well, humanoid scout, um, Canian scout. So, um, again, this is ranged. You can also build up a perfectly viable melee scout if that's what you want to do but I use a variety of different attacks I'm a pretty hard hitting AOE character as well um, with things like my explosive shot kaboom or my Tesla arrows which also are AOE I've got a lot of different elemental attacks Now, admittedly, these guys are a little bit low for me, so not much of a challenge out here. This is a late game area, but it's not as late as some of the, the later instances that you'll get into. Um, if I am able to, I'll get a recording going of one of those instances a little bit later on. But I do a lot of different things with just stacking up damage. Um, another thing is, especially when I'm solo, oops, you're going to see me using stuff like the Tranquil Arrows, which slow down an enemy. I can hit them with DTA, or bleh, damage over time, DOTs. So many anagrams yep there's an enemy faction player this area is actually neutral so in a rare twist it's one of the later game areas that is not pvp Um, but this is basically what you're going to see with the scouts. I've got smoke bombs, which I can drop. Anything inside of this cloud is invisible to anybody outside of it. Only lasts a few seconds, though. Um, escape artist. This breaks me out of any holds or roots or pretty much any of the slowdowns or um, stop status effects. I've got a couple of skills that are very good for parties, like Unity here. This is just a straight up HP boost. And the number of people in my party that are nearby, uh, or the, the larger the number, the more HP boost it gives. 
Then I've got some of the other standards like Adrenaline Rush and things that allow me to get energy built back up faster. Scouts, uh, unlike the Warriors that had the combat advantage, Scouts actually have a limited number of arrows they can use. So here I've got Incendiaries, Teslas, and Tranquil Arrows. I can fill those back up during combat. Um, for example, if I were to go around and just use my Tesla arrows on everything, you see I am starting to run out of them. And if I click on this, I can start enchanting them. So you can refill those in combat. Um, there's also some skills that just give you a certain number of the arrows that you can use every so often, kind of like an emergency stash. But, by and large, if you're sitting there and you're just blowing away at all of your uh, specialty arrows, you are going to run out of them at some point. And by default, they do fill themselves back up after combat. Whenever your character stops moving around, they'll just start filling up their arrows again. So, didn't always used to be the case. Um, they've definitely, definitely made the scouts a lot more player friendly. But, yep, if you want really, really high DPS right out the door, the scout is definitely one of the best in the game for just outright damage dealing. Not only in single target, but also um, AoE. So, there's that. I've also got other things that can slow you down, so... Very much what you'd expect with a scout. Lots of dodge attack... or not attacks, but... Lots of dodge things, escape abilities, things that slow down or incapacitate an enemy, and then deal damage either right up front with melee skills, or from afar. So, quite a big spread there. And this is mostly the melee stuff here. There's my ranged, and then this is kind of a, a mix of different things. Anyways, um, so there is the scout. Let's take a look at yet another class. Hello, and welcome to Darkwater. <coughs> I mean, uh, yeah, this is the summoner class. Um, I am in Darkwater. And this is not a max level character. It's one I've been kind of leveling on more recently. Um, level 22. And I'm actually mostly finishing up this area. So um, this is right about where you need to be at level 22 or possibly heading on to the next area if you get off an early start. So the summoner you're going to be looking at mostly damage over time skills or kind of a vampiric type of um, leeching of health or doing just some mostly straight up caster DPS as well. The other option you can do with the, uh, the summoners specifically is they actually can go full healer. Um, I am not a full healer but I've been out in many a party that's got a full healer summoner and they're quite good at it. You'll notice I've also got a pet. Much like the Wardens. So, caster with a pet. Unlike the Warden pet, however, I have no options to change the appearance of this guy. So, summoners get one of three different pets um, that they choose according to their skills, actually. So here is the Summon Hellion, which is the skill I've got. There's also the Summon Fiend, which for this race is a spider. It does change depending on which race you are playing as. So you'll have different summons uh, running around with different classes depending on your race. Uh, and then the Lurker is the last of the three. And the Lurker is uh, like a type of succubus. At least, if you're playing an elf. Um, so, oh, I'm totally wasting skills here. So I've got mostly things that are going to be damage over time, putrefy, um, 
vampirism is a, a straight up um, damage as well as not life steal but blood steal and that sounds a bit odd I'm sure but <clears throat> if you look down here you can see I've got this thing called a blood bank now a large number of my skills use blood from the blood bank um, for example I've got blood ages here which is a armoring skill I can use there we go I've got six layers of shields on me now and I get eight percent armor increase per charge so I've got 48 percent increased armor every hit I get takes that shield number down by one but um, yeah so I've got quite a bit more armor but you'll notice I drained three drops of blood to do that so if I pop out vampirism here I get some blood back um, this character is also set up so that I get more blood back uh, when things die in my vicinity. So I'm actually, um, because of my blood usage and stuff, I do have a few healing spells. I'm pretty close to a, a hybrid healer build, but I mostly focus on the damage over time. Reason being, I can do this. Take off everything in the area. Target myself, and I not only have heals over time, or straight up heals, but I have heals over time. So, damage over time, heals over time. And while they're dying from the damage over time, my minion here is also smacking them around. So, um, I just basically run around for a little bit then, and as long as I'm careful enough not to get in over my head, I'll be in good shape. Oh, nice. Critical. Just like the Warden pet, however, my pet, uh, as a summoner, will jump in and uh, try to help me out if something attacks me. And unlike the Warden, I actually have a little bit more control over what my pet does. So, kind of like some of the pets that you see in other MMOs, I can set him to attack things. If I just click on a target and click on attack, there he goes. I can tell him to stay put. Up, oh, a little too late. Or I can have him follow me. And then his stance, I can set him to aggressive, defensive, or passive. Passive means he won't fight at all. Defense means he will defend me like he's been doing. And aggressive means he will run around and kill everything in the area. For example, I'll put him on aggressive here. And he sees an enemy, he goes and beats it up. La -dee -da, dee da Go, pet, go. I can target him and heal him if I want. Now notice, I'm not getting XP for these kills because I'm not doing anything to fight. So, for those of you looking at this and thinking, okay, I healed him during that fight, but for those of you looking at this and thinking, oh, well, I can just stand there and let my pet kill a whole bunch of stuff and farm, right? Well, no, not exactly. Some of the other skills I get are um, good for doing damage to a large, large, large number of guys at once. The more I get, the more damage I do to them. Volatile infection. There we go. They all go boom. Oh, whoops. Forgot him. Basically, it sets a time bomb on an enemy that spreads, and uh, after a few seconds, it'll detonate, dealing a bunch of AoE damage. So, if you get a whole bunch of them up together, it infects all of them around, and they all start going off, boom, 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 and they set off each other, I think, as well. Um, anyways, they all explode, and they're all dealing AoE damage to each other. 
So you can get one big, giant, nasty ball of death out if you do that. Anyways, but that's about all there is for the summoner, at least for my build. Again, there's quite a variety of different stuff that you can choose to do. So, the way I've got my characters built up is just the way that I've chosen to do it. It's not necessarily the right way or the wrong way to do it. It's just how I chose it. So, if you are building up your own characters, you'll probably do something different. Just, you know, that fits you and how you play the game better. Meow. Um... Anyways, that's going to be the last class that I go over for this video. Uh, now, I know we've only covered four of them here, and there are quite a few more to go over, but we're going to cut it short because otherwise this video is going to go on and on forever. And the real point of it isn't to show you all of the different classes as much as just to show you what it's kind of like doing some of the combat with these classes. So just a rough idea and hopefully it gives you some ideas of what it's like going through and fighting with some of these guys and later on I might do some of the late game instances and stuff with my higher level characters and record some of that and let you see what that's like as well but anyways for now that's all we've got thank you very much for watching and I hope you join me in the next video when hopefully we'll get back to the skills and things that we meant to do this time so thanks again